Welcome to the first lesson on rates of reactions. Before we get going, we know what it means for something to go fast or slow. But what about molecular reactions? Those are a bit more difficult. So, how do we measure rate? Rate is a measure of change in substance that happens over a single unit time. That unit time is most often a second, a minute, or an hour. So, we may ask ourselves, what is meant by rate? Rate is a measure of how fast or how slow something is. In chemistry, we speak of a rate of reaction. This tells us how fast or slow a reaction is. The units of the rate of reaction are dependent on what you are measuring. The rate is equal to the inverse of time. In other words, whatever you measure with respect to time. The units are centimeters cubed per second. If you measure the volume in centimeters cubed of gas released per unit time or moles per minute. If you measure the number of moles lost per minute. Reaction rate is affected by these four things. Concentration, temperature, surface area and a catalyst. Each can be looked at experimentally and the results can be plotted on a graph. For example, if we collected the gas from the reaction between a metal and an acid, we can plot the volume of the gas versus time on a graph. The steepness of the slope is an indication of the rate of the reaction. If we look at the graph in more detail for an acid and metal reacting and hydrogen gas being released, the graph starts off steep as there are more particles in contact, thus a faster rate of reaction. As the reaction progresses, the slope decreases as the rate decreases as the reactants are being used up and there are fewer particles. When the reactants have been used up, the curve becomes flat as the reaction has run to completion as one or more of the reactants have been used up. The system is an open system as the reaction cannot be reversed. If we look at a metal reacting with an acid, we can see that there are many ways to measure the rate of reaction. Using the reaction between zinc and hydrochloric acid as an example, you could measure the rate of reaction by When choosing which method to measure rate, always choose the most straightforward. Number 1. Measuring the amount of zinc used per minute Number 2. Measuring the amount of hydrochloric acid used per minute. Number 3. Measuring the amount of zinc chloride being formed per minute. Number 4. Measuring the volume of hydrogen being produced per minute. An iodine clock experiment can be used to illustrate the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction. We find that the higher the temperature, the shorter the time of reaction. A typically practical way to measure concentration would be the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium thiosulfate. This reaction produces a cloudy product that indicates that the reaction has reached a certain stage. 
the graph of rate versus concentration can be plotted. In this case, the concentration is the independent variable and the rate is the dependent variable. The resulting graph shows a line passing through the origin showing that the rate is directly proportional to the concentration. Another typical experiment is showing marble chips versus marble powder with an acid and the carbon dioxide gas released is collected in a glass syringe or the mass loss is measured against time. The decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is a typical experiment. The hydrogen peroxide decomposes into water and oxygen in a spontaneous reaction. The reaction is massively affected by the addition of a catalyst. Let us look at a question on rates and extent of reactions. Looking at the graph, at what time did the reaction run to completion? Here we look at where the graph is parallel to the time axis and read off the time. At 80 to 90 seconds, we see the gradient getting towards being flat. Close to 90 seconds, the volume in gas is no longer increasing, meaning that the reaction has stopped. What is the average rate for the first 20 seconds? Include your working out and give the units. Here we calculate the gradient for the first 20 seconds. So, 30 minus 0 all divided by 20 minus 0 seconds equals 1,67 centimeters cubed per second. Why does the reaction rate decrease as the reaction progresses? Less reactants occur as the concentration of the reactants decrease or they are used up so fewer collisions occur, thus a slower rate of reaction, which results in the decrease in gradient. On the same set of axes, draw a graph to show the effect of a catalyst added. Label it A. On the same set of axes, draw a graph to show the effect of a decrease in temperature. Label it B. In the next lesson, we will learn about collision theory and how atoms are affected by changes in temperature and by a catalyst.